we try to hold and also we fail miserably trying to hold on to things now we cannot hold on to anything but we try to hold on to things and nothing in the world holds on to us not money not people not power not fame not health nothing it's continuously flowing we are attached to the world even you are also not attached to the world one monk put it so beautifully think of the strongest possible attachment in life it's a young mother for her baby mother for a young baby um, strongest possible there is a very strong biological and social need for that of course but it's the strongest attachment and yet when she goes to sleep she goes to sleep happily i think young mothers get less sleep than others so they they are very happy when they get sleep and they forget everything the world their own bodies their own baby is forgotten you are not attached you think you are attached nothing in the world is attached to us and we are not attached to anything our real nature our self asangatva let me dwell just a little bit and i'm going to indulge myself a little bit this is the subject which i enjoy why are we not attached to anything what is the mechanism why do you think we are and why we are not actually attached to anything as awareness we are like light we are aware of things so i am aware and i am aware of objects um, people uh, places this is swami are people objects to you people means the body the behavior the language those are definitely objective the conscious being remember the sentient being the conscious being which you are it can never be objectified by anybody else we can all see your body your behavior we can hear your language but we cannot see you as consciousness that never becomes an object to anybody what is an object is that which appears to consciousness that which appears to consciousness is an object think of yourself as a light which illumines everything in your life whatever we see hear smell taste touch whatever we think about whatever we remember whatever we hate whatever we love whatever we desire whatever we plan all of that they are objects being illumined by you you are light now the light is not affected by what it illumines this is the principle shankaracharya says aditya vad bhasya vilakshano aham like the sun bright sunny day out there but it illumines everything people and cars and buildings and central park and water and trees but clouds but the sunlight is not affected by any of it when it illumines the water in the lake does the sunlight become wet when it illumines the um, the dust on the road does the sunlight become dusty not at all like the sun i illumine everything but i am distinct from what i illumine so that's one reason why we are asanga non attached whatever we illumine whatever if you are aware of it you are not connect connected to it if you are aware of it it does not affect you it just seems to be the opposite of our own experience if I, that which i am aware of affects me so no if you are aware of it doesn't affect you because you are that which illumines the object that object cannot affect you like light like sunlight we illumine objects and like sunlight we are distinct from what we illumine that's one reason the second reason is a technical world called upadhi i have had occasion to mention it a few times upadhi is uh, imagine if you have um, a crystal this is a classic example and you put a red flower behind it this is a classic example in sanskrit texts you put a red flower behind the crystal the crystal is transparent but if you put a red flower behind it from that side you will it will look red to you if i put this orange cloth behind the crystal from that side the crystal will look orange to you now this red this orange cloth or the red flower is called an upadhi upadhi is is translated quite unhelpfully in english as the um as the uh, adjunct <laughs> what adjunct what what does it mean <laughs> anything that which which comes near and appears to transfer appears that's the operative word important word appears to transfer its properties to something else so this this one comes near the crystal and appears to transfer its Uh, orange color to the crystal 
The red flower comes near the crystal and appears to transfer the red color to the crystal. But the crystal, even when it looks red, it's not red, it's colorless. Even when it looks orange, it's not orange, it's colorless. And we know that. Exactly like that, we, the awareness, the witness consciousness, when the mind comes near it, like the red flower or the orange cloth, it appears to transfer its qualities to the consciousness, to you. So an upset mind, you feel, I am upset. A mind full of desire, I, you feel, I want. You don't. You're neither upset nor do you want anything. You're illumining the mind which is upset. And the upset is in the mind. <laughs> and the wanting is in the mind. And the unhappiness is in the mind. And the excitement is in the mind. The boredom is in the mind. Waking, dreaming, sleeping are in the mind. Not in awareness. This is called upadi. Therefore, what is in the mind appears to be transferred to, the, to you. You are actually, it is not transferred. You are not affected by it. The crystal is asanga. It is not connected to the orange cloth, nor is it connected to the red flower. It is not connected to orange color, not connected to, it's not smeared red by the presence of the red, red, red color. It is asanga. Similarly, as witness consciousness, we are asanga, untouched. Already, it's already a fact. We have to just recognize the fact. The more we recognize it and notice it, the more we will see, hmm, as awareness, it's all right. Even in the most difficult circumstance, actually, it's, an, it's something that is appearing in me, and looks very difficult, a big struggle, but just temporary. It's appearing, it will go away very soon, and even when it is appearing, it's not really in me. So, upadhi. The conditions of the body, healthy or sick, young or old, smooth skin or wrinkled skin, in the body, not in consciousness. Yes, there's wrinkles in the, uh, on the face, but not in consciousness. Consciousness is not wrinkled. And yeah, that's Swami, that's all right, but I'm worried about the face. But the face is not you. <laughs> the face is not you. It's an object. It's a thing. <laughs> it never was you. That's difficult, Swami. It isn't. It's pretty simple. We are so engaged in taking care of this, what St. Francis used to call brother ass. The body. Feeding it and tending to it and beautifying it. It will cheat us very badly and very soon. It will get old and creaky and troublesome and it will make you work harder and harder taking care of it.